everyone, it's Anthony back with another video here on Single and Placing. Da, 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 da. Um, I hope everyone's having a fabulous, fantastic week, weekend, day, evening, whatever it is for you. Um, today we are going to be doing a kit and chat. We are kitting up Cauldron of Myrrh by Ivy Dullimore, one of my favorite artists from Diamond Art Club. This is a Diamond Art Club canvas. 56 by 74, um, and it is a square drill with 50 colors and four ABs, it looks like. So we're going to crack into this, uh, take a look at the unboxing that I did of this. Um, I believe it was last week or the week before um, the, from the time you're seeing this, or just kind of take a, take a look back in the time machine of my videos and you should be able to find it. Um, I also have a playlist that's unboxing, so you should find it there. So we're going to go ahead and get this kitted up in preparation for the Drills and Chills event and the Festival of Witches events that are kicking off in September. Um, the This kit is one of two, I think, that I'm going to be doing for those events. Um, but um, I read the rules of the event, and you can go ahead and kit up. You just can't start your canvas. So I know I've still got a couple weeks left before those, those events kick off, but I figured I just finished um, um, Astrid by uh, Micah Jelena, and so now I've got a free um, storage container set open. Might as well go ahead and kit it up and get it prepped. That way I can get started on the vent right away. So we've got our bag here with our um, stickers in it and our drills. So I'm going to go ahead and crack that open, get all of our goodies out of here. And then I have, um, set that aside, then I have my uh, empty, partially empty storage container with some blank containers in it that I could use. I also have my um, backups of all of my numbers from kits previous. So I'm hoping that I can kit this up using what I already have or majority of what I have. We'll see. Um, and I'm also hoping that I don't have to bleed into two containers um, because I only have two small ones left as opposed to a big one. So I'd have to use two small ones. If that does end up happening, that might be the encouragement I need to get an additional um, additional storage set that has 120 as opposed to just the 60. But we'll see what that looks like when we get to it. I'm thinking this is small enough that it'll fit in one, but we'll see. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna do this, I have to hunt down my ABs, 113, number one, okay, great. So yeah, I hope everyone's having a great week thus far. Um, I am, I just wanna make sure that I'm working in view for you. Um, I am kind of midweek through my little vacay. Um, depending on when this goes up, I might already be working at my new job. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of midweek through that and I've just been filming my little butt off. It has been um, a lot of recording for, <laughs> for this channel, which has been awesome. I love to have, I'm loving having that kind of bandwidth and the ability to um, record so much. Um, I've already done a couple of vlogs. Uh, me and Apollo went on a hike for one of those. Um, I did a whole bunch of unboxings over the weekend just to kind of set myself up. So I'm excited to have so much to share with everyone, um, but I also want to make sure that I'm pacing it out so I'm not, you know, bombarding everyone. <laughs> Um, number two is 126. It is. Um, so yeah, it's been, it has been a real blast. I'm really enjoying it. Um, but it's all in preparation because I don't know how busy the new job is going to be um, day one. So I'm hoping that I can get some stuff in the bank and get everything kind of prepped. That way, um, if I do need to, um, you know, slow down a little bit on filming just so I'm, you know, I'm giving the new job, you know, everything I have, then I already, I have some stuff that I can still share with you all. I'm doing a really awkward crossover because I, I think I have another two sitting up here. There it is. I just got to reach for it. Oh God. <laughs> oh, why did I put those so far away? Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, it'll be nice to kind of have some stuff already prepped and set up for, um, for the coming couple of weeks. Um, I'm hoping to um, get as much done as I can, both in prepping, you know, content as well as just kind of getting Apollo squared away for the couple days that he will be still created. And, um, and then also just making sure that I'm 
well rested and ready to approach that new role. So yeah, make sure to leave in the comments, you know, what you, what you, what's been going on with you, any status updates, life updates, I love to hear about it. Um, but yeah, so this kitten chat might be a little bit more like um, shortened in the sense that I might just do a fast forward as opposed to doing a full like kit and chat. Um, we, I might just kind of bob in and out as I'm prepping. Main reason being, um, you know, I'm, I, I, I think I lead a, you know, fairly, you know, enjoyable life and, but there's not a ton of like excitement or drama or anything like that. So I was like, oh my gosh, I've already done like, uh, you know, all these like hike and chats and this and chat and vlogs. And I feel like I've been sharing a lot throughout those. Um, so I'm, I almost feel like my, my topic of conversation bin is a little bit dry and I feel like I keep coming back to like chatting about Apollo and it's like I'm sure there's so many people that are like shush about your dog you know <laughs> so I'm maybe you know what what I'd like I guess what I'd like to do is I have been getting um you know seeing a lot more subscribers pop up on the channel which is so exciting and I worked over the weekend to kind of upgrade my channel a little bit as far as like actually have, you know, setting up some intro and outro uh, videos and um, and doing a new banner and then working on thumbnails and stuff. And then on my um, social media, like on Instagram, I've been trying to curate um, some of those stories and posts a little bit more intentionally as well. So hopefully, you know, I hopefully, 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 hopefully you um, have, if you've seen those changes, you appreciate them. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you know, if you, if it's your style, if it's not, um, you know, I, I'm born and raised here in Colorado and I spent a lot, I spent a lot of my time going on hikes and exploring and stuff, you know, when I'm not working or diamond painting these days. Um, I thought I threw another one of those 141s somewhere, but if I did, I have plenty extra. So, um, yeah, so I, I kind of wanted to make my channel theming, I'm kind of focused on like what I love, which is the outdoors. So um, I know it's not like a pretty traditional or common style, I think in the crafting world, I see a lot of more brighter colors and kind of like poppy fun songs. Um, but um, you know, when it comes to like intros and outros and stuff, but mine, it's a little bit more like my taste. So hopefully people can appreciate that. Um, we're looking for 154, which is number five. And there it is. But, uh... Um, so yeah, I've just been working on kind of trying to improve the channel from an aesthetic standpoint, trying to um, create as much content as I can and come up with more ideas. I have a bunch of stuff that I'll be working on throughout the west rest of the week, but I, I might be camping this weekend, so I don't know how much of it I'll get to actually do or if it's just, you know, good ideas for the future. We shall see, but um, yeah, I want to show everyone how I've put together, how I put together my journal, my logbook, um, diamond painting logbook, just kind of how I prep it, the tools that I use, um, that type of thing. And then um, I also want to, um, actually I've already filmed it, I just need to edit it, um, showing everyone my storage process for excess drills or for my long-term storage for drills. Um, number six is 166, and that looks like kind of a yellowish color. There it is. So, yeah, that's kind of my goal is to do some, like, this is how we do it, or, you know, show and tells with kind of how I organize stuff, how I prep things. Um, and then I've, I've been teasing it. I, I'm going to do it tomorrow, I promise. I just got the last thing I need to do it. But um, Christiane is another content creator that I've... I kind of discovered when I, uh, a couple of months ago, I'd say, and um, she has a process for how she frames her diamond paintings, um, essentially by painting the edges of them and then hanging them up um, that way. So I got all the stuff I needed. I was going to do it yesterday, but I didn't, I, I went to go set it up. I'm like, I don't have any surfaces that I'm comfortable getting paint on. So I, I ordered a drop cloth on Amazon. So I'm just going to put a painter's drop cloth over this and then do the project there. Uh, 208 is our next one. Purple, purple. Sorry for all the crunchies. Let's see, purple, where are you, purple? Here it is, okay. Um, 
so yeah, that's my goal. So I, technically I'll have I do, uh, three videos that are kind of, this is how we do it, or let's try this together. Um, that should get me as far as that topic into, um, into September. I've got one number seven here. I know I'm gonna need two for this. Let's see, here's my other number seven. So I have two, two kits worth of spare containers out right now. Some of them are in order and some of them are in not are, are not in order, so I have to kind of like hunt and peck for them. Da, da, da. Ooh, there's a little bit of static in that one. Oh no, that's gonna be messy. No! So messy. Wow, I haven't really seen too much static from Diamond Art Club's drills previously. Could just be the weather. It's been really hot and it's been like a little bit hot and dry certain days and then other days it is very humid and rainy um it rained pretty much the whole day here in denver um from last night all the way through like early afternoon just kind of sprinkling here um we had we even had like some mild flooding on some of the the streets and neighborhoods in uh, South Denver in like the Lone Tree area is what it's called. Um, so that was kind of crazy. I'm about uh, 25, 30 minutes north of there. So I didn't experience, we didn't experience anything that severe, but it's just been wet and kind of muggy. Um, I don't mind it, but a lot of people do. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I would mind it a lot more if it was negatively impacting me like that. So um, totally understand, but yeah, it's been kind of muggy and gross. Sorry, I'm just picking up all of my staticky spilled drills from everywhere. I think I got most of them. I've kind of learned to, I think I'm, what, why do you refuse to go in there? Um, I've kind of learned to, like when I'm kidding up, if I have like one or two errant drills that just didn't, didn't make it, I'll put them in a spare container, what I call like my spares. Um, that way, if I do run low on something, I have it there to snag, but I have yet to reach for that spare container. So now I've just been kind of like putting them in my, um, you know, in a bag of like, you know, excess or just tossing them to be quite honest. So, um, all right, next one is number eight and that's going to be 209. And here we are. This is 209 as well. No, that's 210. 209. I'm, um... I'm seeing a lot of similar colors to the um, the skin tone from the Ivy Dolomore. Um, uh, not Ivy Dolomore. I'm so sorry. This is Ivy Dolomore. I'm talking about the Mica Jelena. This these purples were the the skin tone. So I'm like getting a lot of deja vu from these colors and symbols. Okay, so um, number eight is that what I grabbed? Okay, let's see if I have another eight. Da, 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 I do. Ding ding ding. Great. Um, I can, unless all of these are minimal baggies going forward, if I'm just working on all the big boys right now, um, I'm probably going to need a second container. And if that is the case, then I will be snagging one on Amazon tonight because I don't really like the idea of having one kit in two separate storage containers. I mean, I guess it's fine, but in my head, I'm like, I'd rather have them all in one. And so I'll just do that. So uh, that's probably like spoiled of me to to be like I'll just get another container but I've been kind of toying with the idea of getting one um because I have all these spares that I'm like kind of cycling through now and so I'd like to have a container that just holds all the spares um or if you know for some reason I decide that I need yet another kit kitted up then I'll have that number nine is 210 that looks like this one Um, but yeah, like I said, just like trying to come up with, you know, additional content ideas and try to make sure that I have plenty of stuff ready to go should I need it if things get busy. So any other things that maybe you've been wanting to see from other diamond painters that do uh, YouTube videos that you haven't yet, or if you want additional clarification on a certain topic, just let me know. I haven't really done a lot of like, um, this is how you do some of the basics like um, 
oh, oh well, <laughs> okay, I could just put that in one, um, like multi-placing and stuff, because a lot of that stuff I'm still learning how to master, and I wouldn't consider myself an expert by any means in any of that stuff. So some of the more technical things, I've just kind of left that to the people that have been doing this for years. But other things like, you know, like that framing thing that I think will just be an interesting project to tackle. And other stuff I'll just come up with where I'm just like, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have mastered this or have their way of doing it, but um, I want to see, I just want to work through it in my own head and make sure that I understand the concepts. Um, stuff like that I'll do, but things like this is how you multi-place is like, it's, it's kind of a universal um, a universal approach. Some people will do like um, doing the staggering, like the checkerboard and stuff. Um, but other than that, it's like pretty straightforward. So I've been trying to pick topics that might be a little bit more abstract, like the storage, like storage really is personal. So it's kind of like, what, what would you do given your space and materials and stuff? So that's, that's kind of the approach I've been taking, leaving the, the core pieces to people that have done it, been doing this for a long, long time. Because this is, I think, month uh, eight, I think, that I've been diamond painting, seven or eight. Let's see. Okay, cool. Um, I'll just go ahead and pop this. I'm resigning myself to having to get that extra storage. I made a call early on into this getting up. I was like, oh, because there's 50 colors, which means I only have flexibility for 10 extras. And already this 310 is going to be like half of that. So I just don't think that's going to happen. But we can get as far as we can. I'll work it up into that second that second storage system. And then when the other one comes in, all I have to do is move these little foam bricks into that one and move those two empty ones from the new one into these, and then we'll be all set. Whoops. Okay, let's get rid of that. And then I think we can merge those two to have a full one. Whoop. Perfect, not quite full, but Good enough, since we're playing it fast and loose now that we have 120 to work with. <laughs> I try not to, and I've mentioned this before, I try not to overfill my containers because it just becomes a pain to work out of them, especially if you, um, I'm going to put this where I know it goes, um, especially if you go to reach for a container that's like brimming full and you only need like three of them for that section, then you've got to like carefully tap out the three and then you always end up tapping out like 23 and then you go to put the other 20 back in and they're just spilling everywhere it just ends up being a mess so I try to leave my bags or my containers with a little bit of room in them um, sometimes that doesn't always happen but I aim to have that room and then I typically won't merge like let's say I use a whole bunch of 310 so now I can get I can consolidate to one container. I'll do that as I diamond paint. Um, I try not to do that until I know that like it's not gonna overfill the the one. So there's that. Do I have more tens? I feel like I must. Yep, we've got one. There's two. Um, and I need like three or four more. Ooh, I've got them. I've got them. Good thing for me, um, Astrid had a bunch of 310 because <laughs> I've got them to use, which is always nice. So I'm kind of, I'm wondering, like, I should maybe, like, take a picture of the kit before I start working on it to, like, to remember how many containers or how many, how many drills of, like, each color there were. Because I kind of want to see if it will paint a picture of, like, what my style is, like, I keep gravitating towards these kits that have like, um, you know, X amount of containers of black in them. So I like something that's got a darker background or like that type of thing, because I feel like Astrid so far, as far as amounts go, like this looks about the same <laughs> amount of 310 that was in that kit. So like, I wonder if I have a type when it comes to like styles and canvases and even though I don't think I do like when you when you look at it from a color standpoint it's like no these are all pretty much the same comp color composition just in different areas <laughs> and subject matter I think that'd be kind of interesting to evaluate like if you're drawn to a certain amount of like black in a painting or white in a painting and see if that translates to like how many drills you're using I think that'd be kind of cool 
Um, okay, so we're down to our last couple. I'm going to use this one since they're the same size. Okay. Ba -ba. Boom. So yeah, I'd love to hear um, if there's any events that you're working on or that you're planning on, it, on participating in during the fall. Um, I've got Drills and Chills, Festivals of Witches, and then um, Derek, Di Derek with Diamonds, I think it is. Um, he announced that he was going to do something called like Witches and Ghouls, but I haven't heard much about it, or Ghouls and Witches. I haven't heard much about it since he mentioned it a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago on one of his lives. So I'll have to, if I can get more details, I will. Um, okay, so let's do that. Um, we're at 312, which is uh, blue. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'd love to know if there's any others. I feel like, I feel, I, A, I feel like I repeat myself in like all of my whipping chats, but I want there, I, I want to know if there's somebody that is like responsible, this is 11, for like keeping an eye on like all the events and like who's doing what and when and if that's posted somewhere like on a Google Doc. And if there isn't somebody like that, um, I wish there was <laughs> because um, it'd be so nice just to go to one place, like an Instagram or a Google Doc and be like, oh, there's like these, you know, six events happening in the month of August or these 12 events happening during December. And here's all the links to the information or a quick rundown of what's needed. And then I can be like, oh, I have a kit that I could join six of these events or four of these events. This is awesome. I wish there was kind of a central gathering place. And I've mentioned this before and call me out if you had already answered that and I'm not remembering. I've got such a terrible memory. Um, 317. Good memory, short term, bad memory, long term. Um, especially when it comes to stuff like that I've like said or called out. I'll, I'll respond to your comment in the moment and like talk to you, but there has been times where someone's like, oh, to answer your question, and it's like a video from like a month ago or a few weeks ago, I have to go back and like watch part, watch the video till I get to like whatever it is. Um, and I'm like, oh, right, 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 right. I was talking about X, Y, Z, because I feel like I'm just gabbing a lot. Um, <laughs> so don't be offended if I sound like, if my response comes off as like, did he even know what I was answering? Like, the answer is like, maybe I either I didn't or I had to go back and watch and then I'm like all excited or like, oh, right. Or maybe it, like had read an answer. Or I don't know. Like, just don't take offense to that. Like, if you're if you're responding to a video from quite a while ago, just just know that my brain just keeps on moving and grooving. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's, I, you know, I guess I have experienced some static in Diamond Art Club, um, drills and kits before, but this seems a little bit extra, but like I said, the weather really has been fluctuating quite drastically here, so, um, all right, we've got our, got our diamonds over here that need some love, okay, great, eh, there's one more, eh, okay, cool, so, Awesome. All right. But um, yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to enter this in for, does this go here and this go here? I thought these were the same size. For those two events, um, and I'm super excited to um, be able to post Astrid um, up for week four, I think it is, week week three and week four, or just week four, for um, Micathon and Rainbow Sparklers events. Um, we're on number 13, and that's 318. Let's see, where are you? 318. I thought I just did that. No, that was 12. Where's 318? Let's see, let's see. Come with us, shall we, as we look for the mysterious 318. I could have sworn that's what I just put in there. Did I mess up? Did I mess up? Oh, I might have messed up. Hold on, hold on. Reverse, reverse. 318 is 13. Okay, and what did I just put in there? 317. What the heck? Oh no, did I do something wrong? 413. Oh god, there it is. 
I was like, what did I just do? <laughs> I don't know. I, something about like kidding up can be kidding up, kidding down, doing any sort of this more tedious work while you're doing a chat can be can get you really in the zone and make things move really quickly but when you make a when you make a mistake or think that you make a mistake it really pulls you like out of that like chat haze and like back to reality and like I just immediately go into panic like I don't even remember what I was doing <laughs> like because I'm just you're just like chatting and trying to think about like topics to bring up and like I just get lost in my own stories like I don't know about you um, you anybody else but like sometimes even when I'm chatting with people like I have to make sure that I remember to like give them the opportunity to like interject or like provide some perspective and stuff because I just get lost in like trying to tell the tale in the way that I, the story that in the way that I want it to be told or making sure that I'm not forgetting any details and like just like always just kind of like I don't know, I'm just like processing, processing, especially if I'm just sitting chatting like this. So then when something brings me out of it, it it's almost like a little bit of a, like a jolt, like a shock. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Um, so this is 14. Yeah, let me know if you feel the same way, even if you don't do like sitting in a room just talking to a camera or talking to a microphone. But even if you're like chatting with friends, like there's so many times where like my friend Susan, um, we go on walks together. Um, we actually just went on one today. Um, around the lake, we take Apollo and it's just to help us get, you know, stay active, get some exercise during the week. Um, because, well, not right now because I'm not working, but usually during the work week, it's not like I'm like, pack it up, let's go on a hike, you know, cause it's like getting off work. Usually I'll just take him for a walk, but this lake is about a mile around. And so we've been going there and doing like a lap and a half or two laps, um, a couple nights a week, um, or at least try to. And um, so she is like my gab person. Like I'll go hang out with her and just spill all the tea and we'll just talk. And um, she is such a captive audience and she provides such good insight but she also likes to like she likes to hear me talk about what's going on and so she'll just be like any updates on this do you want to go for a walk to talk about it like i love her for that um and so let's see this is 327 15 i'm gonna need probably three containers for that 15 do we have any other 15s going once going twice i think i might have to use a fresh container oh my goodness in which case I will need um, my stickers. I didn't even think to grab those. One moment. Oops. And sorry for kicking you. Um, okay. Stickers, where are you? There you go. Okay. Another stickers. Sorry. Okay. Good. Stickers identified. And I have, oh God. Now I don't have my marker. Oh, the chaos. <laughs> it's okay. Marker's right here. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't planning on needing to get to um, make any extras. Let me get myself. So you can't see what I'm doing. So I, the table's here, right? The table stops here, you know, beyond your field of vision. Um, then there's the tripod. I'm straddling the tripod with like my legs around it, sitting on my office chair because I want to look, I want you guys to see straight down. So I'm kind of having to crane my neck around the tripod and the ring light. So when I do have to get up, it's a freaking acrobatic <laughs> um, feat to get around because I have to like push the chair back and then like crane my leg up and over. It's just such a, it's a whole ordeal. So once I'm in, I try to be in <laughs> because <laughs> it's hard to move or stand. That's my other option is just to stand. But when you're doing kit ups like that, that would be kind of frustrating. So um, anyway, so Susan is my gab gal. I know her from two jobs ago and we just remained friends. She's just amazing. Um, our last job, we had to travel internationally and we were the only two on our team from the U.S. So her and I in, in the same city. And so her and I traveled to London together. We even took um, an extra couple of days before the actual work conference 
we took an extra two days of uh, vacation time so we could just travel the city together and it was a freaking blast. Then we went to Paris together, which was amazing. And then we went to Istanbul together. Um, and we'd spent, I think we did an extra three days in Istanbul, just her and I just being tourists. We went on this wonderful boat cruise. Um, yep, there it is. We went on this wonderful boat cruise that went on, started on the Europe side of, um, of Turkey and then crossed over the Bosphorus straight to the Asia side. Just did this amazing tour, went to these little fishing villages. And keep in mind, we were just, you know, we were friends because, you know, we developed a friendship during work, but this was like work trips, but we were like vacationing together beforehand um, for three years. And it was just, I don't know, she's just an incredible, incredible human being with so much insight and I just love spending time with her. Anyway. Um, so 336, there it is. So we go on these walks together and I just have to like remind myself, like, pause for a moment in your story, Anthony, and give Susan some time to like react and provide some insight and stuff. But I'm just like, and then this happened and then you'll never guess. I'm like, okay, let's get started. Like, I just am, I feel like I'm such a storyteller um, to, with certain people that I feel like I can open up to. Um, so she's just, in, she's just so much fun and we have a great time. So I think we're going to shoot for third, uh, here in the next couple days, um, to hang out again, um, either to do another walk or just do a happy hour or dinner or just hang out. Um, I tried to get her into diamond painting. So I was like freaking out on her when I discovered diamond painting. I was like, check this out. Isn't this crazy? And of course, like, I'm like, you have to, Susan, Susan, you have to do it. And she's like, oh, I don't know if that's really like, no, Susan. Seriously, it's like so relaxing and you just really get to like wind down and like it's so anti, it's like so de-stressing and reduces anxiety and it's just like perfect for tedious people. And I don't know if she, she's a, she's a detail oriented person. I don't know if she's as tedious as I am, 355. Um, but so she ended up getting a kit and she brought it, she got it, um, I think at like Joanne's or Hobby Lobby, it was a little diamond dots and, um, she started working on it and then she went on vacation to California to, I think it was to see some family. And she was like, um, I'm not huge in, cause she was staying like out in the desert part of California, like, um, not super close to, but in the area of, um, Joshua tree. So it's just like super hot and dry. She's like, this is not my scene. It's so hot and deserty. <laughs> Um, so I'm just probably going to sit in the hotel room most of the time when I'm not hanging out with family. Um, 356 is our next one. Sorry. I'm just trying to keep, keep moving and grooving. Um, so I'm just going to bring the, um, I'm going to bring the diamond painting. I was like, do it, do it. <laughs> Cause I, I'm just like anybody that even whispers that they might be interested. I'm like, how can I, how can I get you there? What can I do to get you, get you to cross the, you know, crossover <laughs> with John Edwards? Um, and she, so she took the diamond painting with her. She took the whole kit, packed it up. And I was like, good for you. And you're brave. I don't know if I could do that. I guess if I had storage systems that I was taking and I just rolled up the, the canvas part is what gets me like, how do I keep that from getting all smushed and crushed? Um, but she, she did it. She took it with her and she sent me pictures of her on the balcony of her, um, like kind of timeshare condo -y thing just, you know, overlooking the pool and stuff and, you know, staying out, you know, <laughs> getting, getting some shade. Um, AC was probably hitting her from behind and she was diamond painting. And then she wrote me and she's like, you did not tell me how small these freaking little gemstones are. And you did not tell me that I make one wrong move and they're going to be everywhere. <laughs> like I'm going to be covered in them. I was like, uh, well, that's something that you kind of learn with your first kit. And so she's like, oh, why did I bring this with me? I've got, I don't know if she knocked him over on the balcony or what, but she came back and she's like, yeah, I don't think that's for me. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to push it. It sounds like you had a time, but I'm glad that you at least tried. And she shared me. Oh, the other thing she was like, she was like, I would like get done with the section and put all the stuff away. And then lo and behold, my, I didn't catch, um, this is 413 yet. I didn't catch one freaking drill or two or three freaking diamonds that were of that symbol that I 
that I needed and I ha I already put everything away. And she's like, hey, if the color looked close enough, I was like, screw it, I just put it down. And I'm like, you, like, that is awesome. Go for it. Like, I struggle doing that. I get anxiety and I'm like, I'll know <laughs> if I did that. So I typically won't do that. Um, but I appreciate the fact that she was like, just keep, like, just keep moving forward. And I think that's one of the main things to like, you know, um, to keep in mind with diamond painting is like, sometimes it's just about continuing to make the progress and not like stopping to obsess over like, oops, I skipped something or oops, I missed this or that. You just keep going and like, a couple sections later, you'll completely forget that, you know, whatever happened before was like, so such an issue in the moment. Like, there's been so many times where I've like, placed a drill that just or placed a line of drills and like ugh but I'm like do I really want to go back through and like straighten all those and then I just kind of straighten them with the pressure of the other drills and as long as they're not popping I'm not trying to go back and like perfect all of that so yeah I I, I just I love that she was a good sport about it and she gave it a good try because a because I think she was curious about it she said that she had heard about it like on Facebook or something um but b that she like wanted to support a hobby that I was into. And she was like, I, well, I told her, I was like, let's do like a little craft day together and we can like diamond paint out of my back porch. And she's like, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> you know, like one of those. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> but I'd love to do that with somebody someday. Maybe I should hit up um my boss from my my most past role the one that got me into diamond painting. Maybe we'll let the dust settle on me quitting but for a little while. So maybe I could reach back out to her at some point and be like, hey, let's hang out and have some white claws and talk about the good old days and diamond paint together. I, I think she would be interested in it, but um, I'll, let, I'll let myself settle into my new role be before I start trying to like do anything like that. Are we all gonna fit, everyone? Are we? Are we? Great, I just made that label for no reason. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure I will use that at some point in the future. It's gonna go in the spare pile. Okay, number 20, we've got 414. Let's see here. Ba -ba -ba. Okay. So yeah, I guess the other thing that I've been wanting to do is like a intro to me video. And it's something that I neglected to do on my um my previous YouTube life was doing skincare reviews and I definitely had to like stop myself and like you need to tell people about like who you are and all that stuff like your your stats you know because I I kind of forget I just jump into whatever I'm doing and I, I don't know if it's cockiness or me just like forgetting but I kind of don't do the like hi my name is blah 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 and this is how everything started I kind of jump in and like hi let's talk about this thing as if I know, know at all what I'm talking about. Like, I don't, I, I have not one to do a lot of like, show me your credentials. I kind of am like, I'm going to own this and I'm passionate about any craft or project or hobby that I jump into. So just give me a minute and I'll get caught up to speed and, and you all leave it. You'll completely forget that I've only been here for three seconds. <laughs> so if any, any other creators have felt like, who, who is this, who's this jumping into lives or who's this commenting with, you know, like, like he's part of the, you know, part of the community so quickly. That's just, that's just my nature. I don't do a lot of like, uh, I don't do a lot of like preamble. I expect people to, I just kind of walk into a space expecting to be welcomed with open arms. And I usually am not one to do a lot of like, this is the gatekeeper of this thing, so you've got to go through them. Yeah, no thanks. I, I'm going to go ahead and just go through this side door real quick and be the life of the party. Excuse me while I grab the ranch. Um, that's kind of that's kind of how I do things. So I apologize if that comes off abrasive. And that's not to say that I'm like, I'm not one to step on anyone's toes or anything like that. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't ease into stuff. I go like from zero to a hundred. And if you've felt a little bombarded by me, if you're a creator or anybody that I've been interacting with, just raise your hand and like, let me know to pump the brakes. Cause that's really what I need. Um, a lot of times is just to like, you know, just take a breath. It's okay. 
You don't have to be all everywhere all the time, and you don't have to be leading a conversation. Um, just let me know, because I'm that's not me. That's not, I'm not trying to do it with any sort of malicious intent. It's just, I get really excited about stuff, and like, it's it's a character, it's something that has both has done me really well in like my professional life, but can also be kind of a character flaw because I tend to like dive into stuff and then other things fall by the wayside. And so I, I sometimes I find it hard to balance, like because I just want to give every everything everything, if that makes sense. Um and from a monetary standpoint too, like when I was doing skincare, I was like, every single time a skincare product was launched from like a major brand, I was like all over it, had alerts set up. So now I've got, you know, years worth of skincare behind me that I have to like give away as people need it or donate it or try to use it as quickly as possible just because I like went overboard. And then now I've kind of fallen out of my routine of how I was doing reviews. So I don't really need that much stuff. And now I'm sitting here with diamond painting with like, you know, building all these crazy storage systems to store, like, you know, um, all my long-term storage for my drills. And I converted my office closet to essentially, now it's just a diamond painting kit gallery <laughs> where I could just flip through and hangers. And it's not a, in relatively speaking, compared to a lot of people that I know that collect, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry, collect diamond paintings, which it is a collection. Some people do it to sell it, but um, for me, it's just like that fear of missing out of like, oh my God, anything from that artist, I don't care what the, what the situation is, I'm buying it. But then it goes to like, oh, I could get another storage container. Oh, I could like, oh, confession time if we're just, if we're just uh, learning about each other. Uh, there's, I have six, 99. Okay, there we go, six on there. Um... Like, I get a little, like, inkling in my head of, like, something that I might want to invest in. And I always want to search for, like, what the best of that thing is to, like, do a, a proper shakedown of it. So, like, that's how I kind of stumbled on Diamond Art Club and stumbled on Diamond Painting Deutschland pretty early on. Um, and then, you know, when I started researching trays, looking for, like, top quality 3D printed trays to order from. And that's how I stumbled on a couple of the brands that I use today. Um, and now it's washi tape. Now my obsession this past week has been finding washi, like top washi tape. And so I mentioned it in a previous video, depending on when this goes up, but I was like, I'm thinking about getting some washi tape, but I don't know. The truth of the matter is I've been like researching washi tape and trying to find like brands because, um... A couple that I pulled out of my stash that I've gotten either as gifts with purchase from um, different small shops, or they've come with things, or I bought them off of Amazon. I went to go use them. Um, where am I at? I'm on 25, 7, 18. Went to go use them, and they would not stick to the canvas. Even the um, the part, the you know, the overlap that the you know the adhesive on the canvas still can hold that washi tape and I was like this stuff is just not good so I've been using uh where is 718 I've been using scotch hold on I've got a I'm sorry I'm making all this noise you know what let me let me organize these a little bit that way I don't have to crinkle and crunch I'm gonna stop you let me organize these and then we'll keep going okay I didn't quite cut all of them I was starting to get a little cramped over here, and I'm, I know that I'm going to have to extend this to a second, a second bin. So I was just like, let's, let's not go too crazy. Let's pace ourselves. So I might do this chunk that I've just snipped and organized, and then move on to the next. Or you might hear some crinkle, um, some excessive crinkle. But I got a, I got another ten or twelve colors, um, worth. So. Um, but we're about halfway through, so we're we're looking pretty good. Like I said, um, you know, I can chat and chat and chat, but maybe at a certain point I might uh, pause this. That way, um, it's just me. We can just kind of do a rush through um, or just like a time lapse. So this is 25. Um, but yeah, I was kind of thinking about it while I was organizing that, and I went and used the restroom and let Apollo out. Um, I didn't, I didn't mean to come off as saying someone's making me feel any kind of way of like, I came in too strong or anything like that. I'm just saying, if you do have those feelings, it's, it's a personality trait that, um, 
that it's it's something that you know I I own and I try to manage as much as possible but yeah, I tend to just be like hi I'm here uh, everyone over here <laughs> you know um but anyway and then I was mentioning it monetary mon like from a monetary standpoint like I find a hobby like another one of my hobbies that I picked up um a couple of winters ago is cross-country skiing and I go a few times a season now but of course I was like, what's the best cross country skis? Even though I'm like, I'm a beginner. I'm spending half of my time on my butt in the snow, but I'm doing it on really nice skis. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, 27, 779. But yeah, that whole washi tape thing. So the Scotch brand is what I've been going with um, most recently. Um, that, cause just the stuff that I was getting as freebies and the stuff that I bought on Amazon initially just wasn't cutting it. It was just falling off all of my canvases. In fact, I have a, a canvas that I tried I tried to do when I very first started. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna prep all of my canvases when I get them in. That's gonna be my thing. And so I took the plastic cover off, or the OP, the, it was the clear plastic cover for this one, uh, 28, 780. And um, I took that off. I sectioned all of it with double-sided release tip paper, but first I bordered the entire thing preemptively in washi tape, and it was one that I had bought on Amazon, um, and then hung it up. And that was in, oh gosh, like March, and it's still in there, and the I had to, like, I've been ripping off pieces of the washi tape as it falls and sticks to the carpet underneath in the closet, because it just wasn't meant to be, like, kept like that and it also wasn't it's bad washi tape so um I should have at least used decent washi tape so I've been looking and researching um the one that I hear pop up from a number of different people mainly from diamonds and washi is simply gilded I know that's one of her favorites but I've also watched a couple of people that use washi tape for like their journaling and planning um and they also really like simply gilded so it's not really only her her recommendation but I wanted to you know try something different because you know she has um, mentioned that it's really good quality a number of times so rather than like feeling like I was e trying to echo that sentiment um, I wanted to maybe try something new that I hadn't heard people use or hadn't heard people create videos of for um, for diamond painting at least and shout me out if, if you, I'm, I'm missing somebody but I ended up landing with the Washi Tape Shop. Um, it seems like they had a pretty good reputation. I believe they're based out of Canada. Um, hadn't seen too many reviews when it came to like using that to line your canvases or to section off your canvases. Um, so I figured I'd give it a shot. It was, once again, like, I'm always like, what's the highest end? What's the nicest? You know, just to try. It's not like I wanna make that the only thing I shop, but just to try it, you know? Um, so it was a little bit pricey. When it's all broken down though, I think it's not, I don't think it's as expensive as Simply Gilded. I think when I do the math, I ended up spending about $3 per roll, $3 to $4 per roll. So nothing too crazy, I didn't think, um, you know, as compared to like the Simply Gilded um, pricing, $8.95. But it, what, it is gorgeous washi tape. And I, I mean, gorgeous these they they use um they license artwork um their artists that they have contracted for their artwork for their washi tape so that's really nice but some of these um these rolls of washi tape were like I cannot believe they were able to get that much detail and texture and like color variants and like just it's so intricate too so I can't wait to show everyone when that comes in um, because I kind of stumbled on it just looking up like googling best washi tape and reading some articles but they were mainly focused around journaling but that company came up a couple of times for journaling and it just I took one look at some of those designs and I was like well I gotta at least try some of this the other nice thing is is they offer free worldwide shipping regardless of your order so you can order um a three dollar washi tape and they're going to send it out to you um they do have some that are at that price point so was this yes um yeah they have some that are three dollars i think it's like 2.95 and they're longer ones it's a seven seven meter roll most of the other nicer washies that i saw in there were three or i'm sorry five meters um 
but they have like the wide ones, they have short ones. I've seen people do all kinds of cool artwork with them. It's just really, really neat. So I'm looking forward to getting that in. As soon as I get it in, of course, I'll be doing an unboxing and I may have, we'll see. I have, I have some fun stuff in, in store for that. So um, what else is going on? Oh, um, speaking of washi, um, and Diamonds and Washi, Katie, I subscribed to her Patreon. So now I'm a patron of hers. I've been trying to catch up on her lives. I think I've listened to the first two that she ever did in like May or June of 2021. And then I've watched the most recent three, I think, and, and I'm halfway through the one that she posted at the time of filming today or yesterday. Um, so it's both the same color, 938. Let's just make sure that I'm on the right track here with 34. Okay, great. So I just need to find a second container of 34. Do I have one? That other kit had 34 colors, so I should have one more. Yep, there it is. Oops, stuck to me. <laughs> there it is, uh, 34. Okay, great. Um, and she, in one of her older videos, I think it was like her first or second vlog maybe, she went to a store called, and spoilers, I'm so sorry if I'm not supposed to be talking about what happens over there. I should have just said it in general that a, a creator recommended this store called Daiso, which is like a Japanese um, based kind of dollar store. Um, and they have quite a few of them in California. I've never seen or heard of this place before, um, but the this person on their video shared... Um, a photo or kind of a shot of all the washi tapes and my jaw hit the floor like there is nothing in the Denver metro area that I know of that carries like washi tape like that it's something that you you find here and there at like some craft stores and some at Target like the Scotch brand but nothing like that and so I was just uh, like what and I found Daiso uh, as a U.S. They have a U.S. storefront, like online storefront, that you can get shipped from. And the prices are really reasonable. They're like kind of cutesy washi tapes that I've seen so far. Like think like um, kind of like Pusheen kind of stuff or like um, a Hello Kitty-ish kind of stuff. Kind of cutesy. But there were some styles that I didn't mind and they're all like a buck 75, a buck 50. Um, they had some solid colors as well. Um, that were I think a dollar, dollar seventy five. So not that and it like not that expensive at all. Like really affordable. And so um, I was scrolling through that site, putting a cart. Oh no! We've got drills down, everyone. Oh, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. Oh no! Okay. So this is a good learning experience. I'm not gonna freak out. I lost about half that bag. Uh, okay, so I've got a drill tray over here. Okay, and I've got, you can't see it, it's just off camera here. They're all on the table. Well, I'd say 50% of that half bag ended up on the table. The rest is in my lap and on the floor. So here's what I will do. I've kind of been mentally preparing for a moment like this. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm looking at about 50 to 100 drills on the floor. So first thing I'm gonna do before I get down on my knees and start picking through carpet fibers and dog hair is I'm gonna see if I have this color in my backups. And this was 35, which was 963. So let's come over here. Oh my gosh, they really are everywhere. Wow, Anthony. Okay, so 963. I'm over here in my containers. Ah, okay. So, Apollo, please don't think those are treats. Okay, so I have 963 here. I believe this was from Diamond Art Club. Let's take a look at our colors. So those are a couple shades off. I'm, I, oh, do you see that? You see, that's more, much more pink than peach. Even though, oh, the, you know what? These might be from Diamond Painting Deutschland. Okay, um, it looks like I'm gonna be picking as many of these off the ground as I can while wrangling Apollo. Last resort, but it's what we gotta do. So please hold. <sighs> okay, all cleaned up. 126 drills later, 
and I believe I got them all. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this, put them in here off camera because there's I, in the drill tray now there's like a bunch of carpet or rug fuzz and it's, it, she ain't purdy. So let me just go ahead and do that. Sorry, Moody Maid, I defiled your tray. <laughs> that was gross. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're back in business. I wish um, I wish that die lot would have been close because I think that was probably right around the amount of drills I needed. So I could have just um, skipped all of that. So, okay, don't talk with your hands as much when you're when you're working on these kits. Let's see. Um, okay, that's all there. So I have to make sure I have it all there right. Okay, that's back. Apollo. You, you can't sit there. I'm, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I need to sit here. <laughs> you plop down right in my little straddling area. <laughs> okay, so moving on. 36 is 96. Great. Well, now that we're somewhat back on track, I don't even remember. I was talking about, I think, um, oh my god. What was I talking about? Oh, Daiso. Daiso and the washi tape. They're really good deals. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to place an order quite yet. But that's what I was doing earlier as I was like putting a cart together and I was like, what? I don't need all these. What am I doing? Like, uh, where, where will I ever put this pattern? You know, because I've been trying to like pick washies that look good with the canvas. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with like a bunch of dancing pusheens, you know? <laughs> um, whoops, that was 36 and I put it in a 35. Whoopsie. Wow, things are, things are really taking a turn here on single and placing. Come on. There we go. Okay. Um, I'll get it. I'll get back in the groove. We're, we're getting there. I have to take a break anyway to, to reconfigure this because there's no way the rest is going to fit in here. So I have to take a break anyway and that'll allow me to kind of breathe. Just breathe. Um, 987. That's our next one and that's 37. So yeah, um, maybe tell me, so I feel better about that. Tell me uh, what your, your diamond painting, if you have any, what your diamond painting horror story has been. Like, have you had an epic spill or a drop? Have you, um, which is, this is something I did when working on self-portrait. Have you ever placed a whole bunch of the wrong drill on the wrong spot? I placed probably about 50 um, of the wrong symbol and me being me, I couldn't just be like, eh, it's fine. So I sat there with tweezers and like pried them all off. And then they were color colors that were really similar. So then I started accidentally prying off the ones that should go there. It was just, I felt like I just couldn't get it right. And eventually I just had to like remove an entire section and pretty much just, or not an entire section, but probably like a 15 drill by 15 drill, like 150 drill section and just kind of start over because I just kept like, frustrating and confusing myself. I think I was just like stressed about other stuff in general at that time. I was just like, forget it, it's taking all these off. So I just kind of basically plucked them all off, put them in their respective containers and like essentially started again. It's not the smartest idea. I could have approached that differently, but that's definitely, I'd say that and what just happened now are like my two big whoopsies in diamond painting thus far. I can't believe I dropped that. I have yet to do that. I've dropped before, like doing this with the funnel um, and the funnels tipped over with a bunch of drills and stuff, but it's always landed on the canvas or on release paper. So it's not been like that big of a deal, but I've never full on just like dumped a bunch on the ground. Eh, come on, buddy. There we go. 40 is 33, 71 of which there are a lot. We're gonna finish off this container with these, at least. Da, da, da. Four really full bags of 3371. Okay, and that's number 40. I only believe I have two of these. Let's see. Oh, I only have one because there's only 34 colors in, in Astrid, so. Um, there's that. I'm going to need at least, at least six, I think. What do you think? 
each of those is usually to one and a half. So yeah, at least six to get me by. I'm gonna open up a seventh for overflow just in case I need it. And we'll see what we get. All right, fingers crossed that this doesn't end up in any sort of epic spill accident. I'm like one of those people, I have a lot of questions for everyone. This is kind of a get to know me um, as far as like, I never even actually got to like the let's get to know. I started talking about like me being the kind of person that just rolls into the room and that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I didn't even go over it. Let's, t let's do that just a little bit. I was about to jump into like a couple more questions for people, but um, so Anthony, Harper. It, Harper is my last name. It's on my Facebook and that's why I'm fine sharing it because I don't have like a single in placing Facebook. It's just me. So if you see me on Facebook, then you already know my name, but that's my name. Um, I was born and raised in Colorado. Um, don't mind me. I'm just gonna, I don't know. I was gonna grab a dryer sheet, but I think I can make this work. Born and raised in Colorado in like Northern Colorado. Um, growing up, we lived mainly in Colorado, but we'd bounce around quite frequently either like, cause my mom was going to go stay, we were staying with family or she got a job somewhere. Um, so I've lived in, um, San Francisco when I was really, really, really young, um, younger than I can remember. Um, we lived in Sacramento for, I believe a year. Once again, way too young to remember. I think this is when I was like one or two. Um, and then uh, came back to Colorado. We've bounced around all over in Colorado. We lived in Longmont. We lived in Longmont, Colorado, which is like kind of Northern Colorado. We lived in Boulder. We've lived in Denver area, but we ended up settling in Greeley, which is like what I would consider my hometown, quote unquote. Um, so that's where I went to high school, um, went to one year of college there. The other year I went in Denver. Um, and so that was kind of my, uh, up until high school, <laughs> uh, story in 30 seconds. Um, and then, uh, when I finished my second year of college, I was just didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was just kind of like floundering is I, I think the best way that I'd put it. I just, really feel like I had any sort of direction and I just all I needed all I knew is I needed to work because like it was like well those two years of college didn't really didn't really kick me into any sort of gear so um so let me at least start making some money um that way I can pay off the the student loans that I've just acquired not figuring out what I don't want to do <laughs> um and so I um, took a job working for a cruise ship um, that cruised Hawaii. And it was a brand new cruise ship that was built, uh, that was being built in uh, Germany. And so it uh, went from Germany to um, Rhode Island is where they had us waiting for it. We were doing all of our training there in Rhode Island. So um, and keep in mind, I'm a pretty like, you know, born and raised in like, relatively small town, you know, um, I, my family and where I, I guess I should say I actually grew up is in even smaller town, about 15, 20 minutes outside of Greeley, but it's super tiny. Nobody knows what it is. So we'll just say Greeley. <laughs> and I did go to high school in Greeley. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was a huge culture shock and change for me to be working with an international um, group of people from, you know, all walks of life, all ages and backgrounds. Um, come on, come on. Um, and I just fell in love with it. I had so much fun. We So it picked us up in Baltimore. We went from Baltimore all the way through down to Miami. No stops. Um, straight to Miami. And then from Miami... And keep in mind, this was a new cruise ship, no passengers, just the crew. They were doing testing, uh, like mechanical testing on the cruise ship. We were doing uh, practicing, like literally, like I was a waiter, literally walking big old trays of food around when the ship was going crazy, <laughs> just to make sure we could handle it. Um, they were just, uh, we, the chefs were testing menus. So we almost got to act like the um, like the passengers sometimes. We got to go, we ate it all the night, like the, the, ship, the cruise ship restaurants. 
Um, but we were the staff and like they were just cooking for us, like practicing recipes, perfecting things. Cause like you get on this cruise ship for the first time and they're like, all right, um, you, you um, applied to be a cook. Well, you're working in the French restaurant. It's like, um, I've only ever made waffles. And they're like, yeah, well, okay. Well, guess what? French food, here we go. So <laughs> they did that. Um, they uh, taught all the chefs how to do it. And it wasn't like that. Like I'm sure there was some more trained people, but certainly people that were cooking that cuisine for the first time. Um, let's see, that was 40 and we were using orange. So let's just do orange. I need one, two, three, four, five, six more. So perfect. Um, so we were just get it, being the guinea pigs essentially for it. And it was delicious food, don't get me wrong. Everyone was doing an amazing job. Um, so we went from Miami through the Panama Canal, which was incredible, was such an incredible experience, through Panama, back up to um, San Francisco, then down to LA, and then down to San Diego, where we picked up our first passengers and went from San Diego to Honolulu straight straight through. So that was our, my little jaunt and then I spent about two years um, on seven day cruises around the Hawaiian Islands as a waiter. It was incredible. I paid off a lot of student loan debt. Not all of it, but a good chunk of it. Um, I'm gonna clear out these extras. See like this is the thing here. Now I don't now that I'm using up both of my small ones, I don't have a home for any of these extras. I was using an empty one to keep them, but now I have no place for them. So I'm either going to peel all the stickers off or I'm gonna order a double kit. That way I can keep this going. Eventually this isn't gonna work because, you know, some of this just isn't going to be usable because I won't need exactly this many 40s maybe ever again over here. So who knows, I'm debating. I may just peel them all off. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm going to have to figure something out. But um, anyway, so um, worked on the cruise ship for a couple of years. It was awesome experience. And then when I was essentially what happened is the recession hit and we just started seeing a lot less um, passengers. One moment, please. I'm having a sip of my beer. Um, a lot less passengers. And they had doubled down because there was such a boon in, um, in cruising. They ended up putting three ships in Hawaii at one time when really just one was kind of needed. <laughs> um, so when things slowed down, they really hit hard. And so they decided to take the newest two ships, uh, 3608, okay. um, and put them back into international waters to do international cruising again. Um, does that say, what am I looking at? I'm looking at 41, 41, 36, 08. Am I blind? No, I'm not. Okay, maybe I really am missing something now. 39, I mixed this up with the 36, 08. So this is supposed to be, okay. So this is 41 technically. Whoo, I was like, what the heck? That was a close one. You know what would be awesome? And I I know that Diamond Art Club doesn't need to do this. I'm sure no one's no one else is asking for this. But what would have been helpful in this moment of um Tom Foolery is if I knew how many drills, you know, were supposed to be with each one. Cause then I could be like, oh clearly this this is less than this, therefore that was where my mistake was. But that makes more sense because this is much more of a pinkish. Yeah. Whoopsie. Okay. Woo. Okay. Let's see if I can just do this right into here. That must have been, was that right in the midst of my little, my little screw up? Because that would have made sense. Oh, that goes in here. Um, oh, oh my gosh. I was like, diamond art. Cl <laughs> clutch my pearls. Um, 42, 3609. Um, okay, so cruise ship, we were talking cruise ship. So then, yeah, recession hit, and they moved two of the three ships to international waters. 
one of the ships was mine. So they gave us the option to either stay and convert to international employees or that would be our last tour. And when you're to, when we were doing our um, cruises in Hawaii, they had to abide by Hawaiian law because we weren't doing international sea days. It's not like we were going out into international waters and back. We were literally just going around the Hawaiian islands for seven days on rotation. And so we got Hawaiian minimum wage, we got overtime, benefits, like all the things that you you would expect being a, Hawaii, a, a person working on the actual islands of Hawaii. Um, we got all that stuff. But then once they were like, you go international, then there is no such thing as minimum wage. They can pay you whatever they want. Um, there is no such thing as overtime. There is no such thing as benefits. So suddenly what was a really sweet gig might have ended up being a not so sweet gig. For some people, there are certain people from certain areas, um, certain lifestyles, certain you know expected incomes where they can very much thrive and support their families um, on that income. And that's amazing. That just wasn't the position that I was in, unfortunately. Um, you know, I, I can go back to come back to Colorado and make minimum wage and be making more than what I'd be making there. So $37.99. And that's 44. I'm only going to have one of those, so I'm going to need probably two more. Let's do these shorties to match. Um, so I made the decision to come back um, after my, is that my third or third tour or fourth tour? So the way they do it is you'd have six months on. Um, so yeah, I must have done four total, six weeks off. Um, so you'd work six months straight, seven days a week. Um, oftentimes somewhere in the realm of 60 plus hours per week and then um, you'd be off for six weeks and they would cover your cost of travel to and from um, back to wherever it is that you live you'd have that six week vacation um, unpaid <laughs> um, so they also did something called extensions so if you had the extra energy and spiciness you could work an extra month and get an extra week off. So you could do seven months on, seven weeks off, and that's what I would do is seven on, seven off. Um, so I did that, I guess it must have been three times, um, plus the vacations ended up being about three three years. Does that make sense? I think, I hope. Maybe I did four tours, I can't, honestly, I can't remember anymore. Um, and then uh, on my final tour, I said, book my trip home. You know, when they said, you know, you're in, you're out. I said, I'm out. Book my trip home for three weeks after I walk off this ship because they were paying for my plane ticket home. So um, I, they were like, yeah, that's fine. So I spent three weeks partying it up in Hawaii. I was still underage at this point, but I did what I could with what charm I had. <laughs> And I just had an excellent time. I had a combination of sleeping in hotel rooms, sleeping on the beach, uh, just being a total bum and just partying it up. It was so much fun. And then I came home and reality hit that like, oh, I've spent the past couple years um, away from my friends and family, uh, friends who were still, who were in that like college life still, you know, or just emerging out of that family. I had a little brother, or I, I still have, I have a little brother who's 16 years younger than me. So he was like calling me. Uh, my mom would call me and he, I was listening to him learn how to like talk and do full sentences and being like on the opposite end of the world, it felt like, and it kind of was. Um, so I just missed out on a lot of that stuff. So like, I just kind of hit this like dark patch where I felt like my friends, had, everyone had moved on, you know? Um, and I was still kind of, I felt a little like stuck from when I left in like 2008, six, um, 2006. So it was just kind of like rough. And I feel like I spent a lot of time just kind of trying to foster those friendships again, but eventually just kind of finding new friends. I basically just kind of had to start over, um, a little bit, it felt like. Um, and then I moved to, um, just outside of Denver um, after I got a job working for a shoe store, I met this, um, this per this really lovely person who, um, we became really close friends. And then, um, 
she was like, oh, I rent a room in this house and it's total like real world style. It's this big house that this guy rents and there's like eight bedrooms and like 10 people living in it. Do you want one of the rooms? And I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's just do a full shock to the system. So I moved out because I was staying with my parents still at that time. So I moved out, moved to this big house, um, kind of in the sticks a little bit with all these people from like all walks of life, all different ages and just had a really good time and um, I still have really close friends from living in that house. The owner of the house and his wife now, um, I still hang out with them pretty frequently. Um, that's 38, 37. And built pretty much a whole new friendship group of which majority of which I still carry with me today. Um, from that kind of kind of jump started my social life again. And then from there branch that, you know, meet this person to meet this person who introduces you this. But I'd say like the majority of my friends in my adult life stem from the people I met in that house back in uh, 2010, I guess, or 2011. So yeah, about 10 or 11 years ago is when I kind of like restarted my whole friendship group. But now those same people are like now married, some have children. Um, you know, some, we just go, go different paths. So now I'm kind of in a transition again, where, you know, I'm trying to kick up some new friendships. A lot of them have been stemming from work. Um, some of them have been stemming from like, just like meeting people through online meetup groups and stuff. And some of it's stemming from social media. Um, so, um, yeah, it's just kind of ebbing and flowing. I feel like I'm, I've hit like this 10 year cyclical thing where now I'm like, need to find that next evolution of people that I really connect with. And it's an exciting time, but it's also scary, scary and can be a little bit depressing because it's like, uh, you know, you've been friends and close with people for such a long time. And then you kind of come to the realization like, oh, we're just in very different places right now. And it's less about just becoming more acquaintances and close. And now it's like, sometimes it feels like, oh, it might actually be toxic for me to stay, to push through, um, you know, engaging with this person just because of the history that we have together, the length of friendship that we have together. Like, just coming to terms with the fact that, like, it's okay to let go of, um, oh my gosh, <sighs> it's okay to let go of people that are no longer, you're no longer able to provide what they need um, to, in, in their lives to be happy and fulfilled and they're not, not necessarily giving that back to you or maybe it feels more one-sided where you're pushing really hard to keep a friendship or a relationship strong when that other person has kind of come to that realization before you have and that can be really painful and so I think I'm just kind of coming out of that you know kind of like emerging from that into a place where I'm ready to like start engaging again, starting to bring some new energy into my life and find some new uh, some new people. And, and I think this time around, I wanna find some people that are grounding um, that can help to, you know, that can, can be a sounding board for me just as much as I am for others and um, are willing to make a friendship be a two-way street where they're able to, to put, are able and willing to put in some time and energy um, rather than just kind of, um, sucking that up. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. And we're finishing the last color with me almost crying on my, on this getting up. Uh, great. How fun. <laughs> I'm sure there's so many people that are like, no, thanks. Uh, bye. <laughs> Oh, didn't expect what a what a roller coaster ride of a kidding up that was. I first started by saying, "Oh, we're just gonna make this super fast. I'll probably I'll probably talk to you for a good two or three colors, and then I'm gone. I don't have much to say. I've been talking all week. N no, we could go. We just opened up. We could go. We could really go. Um, but I'm gonna spare you from having to deal with the cleanup. Like I, ha I'm gonna take all the stickers off of these. This is nonsense because um, I don't want to buy another another storage container. Um, although I might. The last thing that I want to do is um, is pick out our washi tape. Make sure I'm not rolling over Apollo. He's he's well behind me. He's so patient today. 
he went on this, he went with us on that hike or that uh, walk around the lake today. And I took him on an extended walk as soon as it stopped raining because he's been cooped up. So he's a little tuckered out. Um, okay, so we're looking at um, Cauldron of Myrrh. And so we've got like the black cat and the witch and we've got that purples from the cauldron. So I'm thinking this washi tape, see how it's got that kind of lavender look to it? It's not quite silver. That could be cool, especially since there's a ton of ABs in here. Um, what else do we have? We could just do a flat black or a straight black glitter. That could be nice. I'm trying to see if I have any non-glitter. Um, I have this silver. That would be nice. Honestly, I kind of already know which one I'm going to pick based on seeing it against the background. I have a thinner of that lavender. So those are the same color, just two different widths. Um, eh, that's it. Everything else doesn't really match from a color standpoint. Well, I'm going to pick this one. I think this is gorgeous, especially with all the ABs that's going to be going on here in that similar purple. Done. I have to sneeze, sorry. Um, okay, thank you so much for sticking with me through that. I feel like even my phone should have been like, um, getting too real, shutting off. <laughs> but um, let me know if you have any questions, comments about either this kit or the kitting up process. Um, like I said, I, I'm going to have to store this in two separate zippered containers. So you've got one through 40 over here and then a continuation of 40 through 50 in this one. Um, so we're going to put that in here. I may give in and buy a, a double decker storage container so I can put these all together. But for now, we're going to place our two stickers. So our sticker sheet and our mini sticker in here. We're also going to pop our washi tape in here so I don't forget which one I wanted to use for this kit. And then when September 1st hits, I can just open this and start diamond painting. Awesome. So yeah, thank you all so much for sticking sticking with me through this. Quite the, um, quite the journey through my um, psyche. And um, yeah, um, thanks again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this content with friends, family members, or anyone that you think might take some use out of it. Otherwise, I'm going to head out. I'm going to clean up my, um, I have some of those. I have all this to, all these containers with stickers. I'm going to peel them all off so I can put them in this one. And so Cauldron and Myrrh will be all set. And then ideally, I'll have this done in one month. And then I can immediately kit up the second kit that I want to do for these events. Don't know what that is yet, but stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for more whipping chats, kitten chats, hikes and chats. Let's just chat and um, have an excellent rest of your day or evening. We'll catch you next time. Happy placing. Bye. Bye-bye-bye-bye. Bye. bye, 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 bye.